Hopes running high in Thailand after the opposition got a strong mandate from the people in the country's 26th general election. How challenging will political and social reconciliation be? With an inexperienced woman set to be the country's new prime minister, will the country be heading for a period of stability after years of turmoil? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the programme. I'm Sahil Rahman. Yingluk Shinawat has won a decisive election victory in Thailand. Her party won a majority of the seats in Parliament, a clear sign of support for her brother, the former Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawat. But the relative newcomer to politics is hoping to hold it together in a coalition government. Wayne Hay reports. As if the election result wasn't bad enough for the Democrats, some opposition supporters couldn't help rubbing it in riding by the home of the party they helped to vote out. At Democrat headquarters in Bangkok, the images on the walls will need to be changed after the face of the party resigned as leader. As I am the leader who led the Democrat Party in this election, and the result was that we got less seats in this election compared to the previous one, and as this is a well-organized party, I have to take responsibility. So today I have decided to resign from the party leadership. All around Thailand there are reminders of a government that, according to the majority of voters, was a complete failure. Abbasid Wachichiwa really had no choice but to resign and other senior members of the party may well follow. Not only was this a disastrous campaign, the Democrats haven't won a general election in almost 20 years. The party came to power in 2008 through a parliamentary vote. It cobbled together an unlikely coalition, reportedly aided by the army, which had two years earlier staged a coup. Abbasid became Prime Minister, facing what some say was an impossible job. He's a good politician, uh, but the situation forced him, uh, gave him so little options because he owed so much to many people, to the military, you know, to a lot of invisible hands. Uh, I think he will still be around. The Democrats were also clearly hurt at the polls by the handling of last year's anti-government protests. 91 people were killed in clashes between the army and the demonstrators, most of whom were supporters of the Pua Thai Party, which cruised to a comfortable win in the election. And the party is led by Ying Lak Shinawat, who, after a parliamentary vote, will become Thailand's first female prime minister. Despite winning enough seats to govern alone, Pua Thai has formed a five-party coalition. Wayne Hay, Al Jazeera, Bangkok. Well, joining me on this edition of Inside Story in Bangkok, Kriyansak Cherawonsak is former member of parliament for the Democratic Party. Mr Cherawonsak ran as governor of Bangkok and was advisor to several Thai prime ministers. He since left politics for an academic life and is now a senior fellow at Harvard University. In Singapore, Michael Montesano, visiting research fellow at the Institute of Southeast Asian Studies in Singapore, and via broadband in Bangkok, Pitaya Pukaman, Deputy Spokesman for Ministry of Foreign, Foreign Affairs for the newly elected Pu Thai Party. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us on this edition of Inside Story. Mr Pitaya Pukaman, can I come to you first, sir? Uh, is Thailand now heading for a period of stability with this election after five years of political instability? I believe so, because uh, two years ago when the... Uh, our predecessor, the, uh, the Palang Pachachun Party or the PPP, uh, won the elections. Uh, we had uh, 233 seats, which was not enough uh, for the majority. So we had to team up with other coalition parties. But after less than a year, uh, the, uh, uh, there was the effort uh, being orchestrated by, uh, by the military uh, with collusion of the Democrat, and they were able to coerce some of our members to the other side and uh, has they have brought some of our MPs up right so we we lost the majority and uh, we were the opposition but this time around uh, we had a very clear and comfortable majority of 265 seats and uh, we have also invited uh, four other parties to join making it 200 and 99 seats, uh, which is 
So you um, think that's um, so you think that's a stable yeah. you think that's a stable government, and we should see a period of stability for Thailand. I think it would be a stable government, okay. and more right, uh, rightly so, uh, and more so because the people have given a very clear and loud and clear voice uh, that they uh, want us to to admit to the country. Mm -hmm. They are tired of okay. the uh, of the three years of instability. We'll go. We'll go and into that, sir. I, I, I want to try and cut you, I want to try and get our other guests in. So I just want an initial brief comment from you. I'm not trying to cut you off at all, Michael Montesano. Can I just no. bring you in here for an overall view of what's been going on in Thailand? Obviously, for the past five years, it's practically been in the headlines every day for one story or another. And certainly, uh, the, the violence and the the impasse between political parties over the last five years uh, certainly hit the streets of, of Bangkok and beyond. I mean, my same question to you: Do you think this election will bring Bring stability to Thailand because that's what it needs, isn't it? It does need stability. At the very highest level of Thai politics, this election can yield stability as long as all players in Thai politics are willing to honor the decision of the electorate. When we talk about all players in Thai politics, we're talking about groups within parliament and also outside parliament. There is the military. There is, of course, the network monarchy, this loose coalition of men and women around the palace who are so influential in Thai affairs. There's the judiciary, which again must both enforce the law and honor the will of the electorate. And then, of course, there is the Democrat Party, which has a distinguished history in Thai politics of being a very successful opposition party, but one hopes that its opposition in the parliament mm. will be constructive during this newly elected parliament rather than wantonly destructive as is certainly the risk. And we will get into the dynamics of those two parties and how they will proceed and work together or against each other a little bit later in the program. Mr. Cherian Wonsak, also in Bangkok, welcome to Inside Story, sir. I mean, you were once a member of parliament. You would say uh, perhaps that you are a supporter of the losing political party in this particular election. But as an overview, sir, can you just give us an, an idea of how divided Thai society really is at the moment and how divided it has become over the last five years? I think the division is at the top level and it's already filtered down all the way through to the bottom, to the grassroots. And therefore, this division is so great now. And it is an issue that is concerned all of us. This government will bring only stability for a small uh, portion of beginning honeymoon time. After that, there could be anything that can happen. Depends on how the key players mm. play their cards Mr. and how would they handle one another. I didn't mean to interrupt, Mr. Abbasit Vichichiva, the, the, the leader of the, the Democratic Party who resigned his position after losing the election, found it very difficult to unify the country in the, what, two, three years that he was in power. From your perspective, how difficult a job is it for the incoming prime minister, considering she, as we all think it will be, uh, Yingluk Shinawat, is from the uh, Putai Party? It is a very difficult job at this moment because the stake is very high. The division is still there, and the word reconciliation are mainly rhetoric. I think the essence is still unable to work out unless there is some backdoor negotiation between all sides so that some clarity is made on, clear, on, on certain issues mm. that is there. Say, for example, if Ying Lak is trying and is natural and it's her right to try to help her brother to try to return to Thailand, for example, as soon as she make a move in some way, some other groups going to rise up and start making protests again. So this issue is one example. On the other side, it's clear that there's no trust factor involved in this. And hence, because of lack of trust, mm -hmm. it will be watching over these first few months and first maybe the first part of the, of the time being in government, the first year or so, and mm -hmm. see how things is being moved along. Sure. And I think the stability is still far from clear. Okay. We need to watch further how okay. the development is going to be. 
Okay, well, let's, let, let's take that over to Mr. Pokemon as well. I mean, obviously, sir, you're very close to the higher echelons of the Putai party uh, and, and the difficulties in reconciliation. I mean, one of the issues would have been the 2010 crackdown, uh, which killed 90 people on the streets of Bangkok, injured 1,800. Reconciliation, moving on from the past, these are all huge issues for the incoming prime minister to take on board, including the very controversial issue of her brother and what happens to her, him if he does come back to Thailand. If you're talking about reconciliation, I mean, a genuine recon reconciliation and not the reconciliation uh, being proposed by the outgoing government. Uh, I think uh, the, uh, the new government headed by Mrs. Uh, Ying Lak will have a very a tough job. It's a very tall order. Uh, we have to be treading on a thin line. We have to play a very a delicate a balancing act. On the one hand, we will have to uh, uh, launch the process of reconciliation uh, through uh, 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 some committee uh, which is impartial, uh, so that uh, we will not be a party to that. Uh, we will have the impartial par uh, par uh, committee uh, uh, you, uh, well, study the, uh, the process of reconciliation. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the, uh, the victims, uh, 91 in all, who were, the, uh, who were subjected to uh, the crackdown uh, last year, uh, uh, somebody has to be responsible, somebody has to be accounted for this uh, bloodshed. Uh, uh, so we have to establish okay. the facts, the facts, the facts, uh, that uh, who uh, ordered the killing, who pulled the trigger. But it's one, it is one, of, it is one of yes. many issues that you, your party is trying to address. If I can just inter intercede there just for a moment, uh, because we, it will make sense when we go on from here, because in an interview uh, from exile in Dubai, former Prime Minister Taksin Shinawat told Al Jazeera that his sister should first deal with reconciliation. I told my sister, don't worry about me. Let's bring reconciliation to the country and let unite the country. And then whatever it affect me, if I can go back because the result of the reconciliation and, and unite, then I will go. If not, don't worry. I am quite settled myself abroad. Michael Montesano, I want to bring you in here because we, we've heard from Mr. Pokemon talking about one particular issue, which was, which was the crackdown in 2010. Taxi and Sinawat talking about reconciliation. Huge issues for a prime minister who has no political experience, but it's more than just a pretty face. I mean, uh, Ying Luk is or has a degree in um, uh, political science, a master's degree in public administration. She knows and has all the skills. She just has to implement them. Well, I think I, she, I she, feel, she, she also has to provide leadership to a very complicated government. And I think that she's going to have to coordinate among, among many different interests. One of these interests are those elements on the red side of the Thai political equation that want truth to come along with reconciliation. And while each of my fellow guests have spoken very calmly and very reasonably about the situation, and while I disagree with nothing that they've said, the, the point that Mr. Pitya has made about those victims of last year's crackdown wanting to know what happened this could already be a very dangerous issue because if one probes into uh, the military and the role of the military and the role of other parties in last year's crackdown, this could really lead to a, a very strong backlash that could rock Ying Lak's government uh, some months from now. Well, I think you bring in a, a very uh, pertinent uh, topic to move on with, and that is the military. Uh, Mr. Charyan Wonsak, can I come to you in Bangkok? How much do you think the new government has to look over its shoulder towards the military, even though the military are saying that they will respect the vote uh, of the masses? It's, it's obvious that the, gov the new government will be very worried about the military. The gesture is so clear before even the election day that Jing Lak was trying to symbolically make an overture to go and see the army commander-in-chief. And that is uh, just a gesture to symbolize what needed to keep the stability. And therefore, there's a lot of issues that need to be worked out because the military holds the balance of power. And if the military is unhappy any time with the new government, whoever going to be leading, it's still not clear even whether Ying Lak will be the new prime minister. It's likely to be if it's allowed and negotiation is, is truly come through. But if she become 
the prime minister, and it's her prerogative to be one. If she move on and a any time ruffle the whole military rank and file at the top level, I think the issue is going to be very serious. Therefore, something has to be worked out behind the scene. I do believe that this is very vital for stability, and the military is very much still in charge in the sense that prior to the election, the previous coalition of government clearly was set up and in the military camp, mm. and therefore the military was nurturing the existence and the ongoing continuance of the, the, the past government. Therefore, this new government has to tread carefully in able to send signal that anything that is negative repercussion on the military okay. need to be at least waiting for a period before mm. any move be made. Okay. And if it's done too early in this honeymoon period, it could be detrimental. Okay, Mr. Pukeman, let me um, bring you in here. Then would you agree with that, that your party is perhaps concerned or should be concerned about uh, what the military think and do? Uh, yes, yes, definitely we have to be concerned. Uh, that is why the uh, Mrs. Yang Luck, as the number one contender, uh, before the election, during the electioneering, uh, she uh, was very emphatic in saying that she wants to rectify rather than a revenge. Uh, so which means this sends a very strong, clear signal uh, to the military and the, uh, uh, the political parties who were involved in the, the crackdown. Now, having said that, uh, uh, we want to rectify. That means we do, want, do not want to, uh, to ruffle any feathers or offend the, uh, the military. But the military also have to know their role. Uh, the, the military should not uh, interfere with political matters. Uh, and uh, we, uh, as politicians, as political parties, uh, we have made it clear that we will not interfere with the mil military affairs as long, so long as the military affairs do not, uh, is not uh, done uh, in a detrimental to, to the country. So okay. we have been very clear. Now, the military has to know its role. Uh, it has the uh, uh, stranglehold on power uh, in Thailand for the past uh, 80 years. Um, now, this is 21st century. This is not a medieval era. So the military will have to adjust itself to the globalization to uh, to know their role, uh, that uh, they have to uh, loosen the grip on power. They have to learn how to share power. Uh, we don't want to monopolize power, but we want all the parties concerned to share power. and. The only way of doing that is to subs subscribe to democratic process, and that is what we're doing. The people has voted. The people have given the judges judgment uh, that they want democratic process, and given a very loud and clear voice, okay. uh, a slant like victory. The, mm -hmm. the military should uh, realize that they, the time is up; that they have to come to, to terms with themselves and to learn how to share power. Okay, Michael Montesano, can I bring you in here? The military have to learn to share power. How much of a, of a learning curve has this particular election result been or will be, do you think, for the military? Well, this is a very difficult issue because one of the things that gives the military a pretext for its political involvement in Thailand is a very close relationship between the military and the Thai monarchy, a relationship that dates from the premiership of Field Marshal Sarit Thanarat in the late 1950s. And with the current reign approaching its end, with the prospect, prospect of a succession to a new sovereign in Thailand at some point in the future, we can expect the military to be very, very skittish about the circumstances of this coming transition. And this is one more hot-button issue that will lead to the sort of military involvement in politics that Mr. Mr. Pitya was just criticizing in, in very level-headed and very balanced terms. In a sense, a deal with the military on the budget, on military promotions, I think will be fairly easy for uh, Mrs. Ying Lak when she becomes premier. I think a deal with the military on investigation of what happened in 2010 will be much more difficult. When one adds to that tensions over whether a Pua Thai government 
will be in power in Thailand as this reign approaches its end, this takes us onto very, very unfamiliar ground and, and very dangerous ground regarding the role of the military in politics. And of course, talking about the monarchy itself to Thai nationals is always a, a very touchy subject, but uh, because the, the Thai monarchy and His Majesty King Pumipoli is, is much revered in, in Thailand. But uh, Mr. Charian Wonsak, can I come to you? Do you think the monarchy of also learning a lesson from this election, that they too must listen to the people? If we just take an example from the British monarchy, for example, when Princess Diana died, there were issues over whether whether the flag should be at half mast over Buckingham Palace or not. And the, and the Queen had to listen to the scathing criticism of her public before she took any action. Do you think lessons are being learnt within the Thai Royal Palace? I don't think I'm in the position to comment on the monarchy. I only can make my own ob observations that the, the mon monarch here in Thailand has been most passionately caring for the people and therefore any grievance from the people will be heard with, with great concern and kindness. Therefore, I don't think I'm in a position to comment beyond that. Okay, well, Mr. Pokemon, can I ask you the same sort of question? Do you think that the Thai monarchy themselves are also very interested listening to what their public is saying and perhaps though you're not in the inner circles of the royal household, they will be quite concerned about how the new government proceeds. Well, this is a very uh, uh, sensitive matter. Uh, I want to comment on the fact that uh, Mr. Thaksin has always been uh, a loyalist. Uh, he has uh, no intention at all to uh, uh, any disrespect uh, for the uh, for the institution of monarchy. He, in fact, during his, his uh, administration, he has uh, he has uh, honored uh, uh, the present king uh, when he uh, celebrated his uh, 60th year of the reign. Uh, but the, his opposition, his his uh, his uh, enemies, uh, his adversaries, have been using uh, the institution of monarchy as a tool to discredit Mr. Taksin. And uh, I'd like to make a very clear point that to, to use the institution of monarchy for political ends uh, it's not, does, not, does not go well with the Thai society, and it should not be done at any mm -hmm. cost, uh, uh, at the cost of, uh, of bringing down the monarchy. The, the monarchy, especially the, uh, the present king, is very much revered. Mm -hmm. Uh, he has uh, done so much for his country, mm -hmm. and uh, personally, I think there is no uh, system of govern government which is uh, better than constitutional monarchy. Okay, and well, let's we're we're, 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 we're we're getting to the near to the end of our program. I just want to move on to finances now, uh, having touched upon the issue of the monarchy. Michael Montesano, uh, in fact surprisingly, uh, and it surprised me when we did our research, that of course Th Thailand's uh, revenue has actually increased over the past few years. Uh, tourists have not been put off from going to the country. Uh, and in fact, uh, even private business wasn't affected as much by the civil disturbances happening across the country. They never asked for uh, government help. So in terms of the economy, in terms of Thailand's future, I mean, how much of a, of a pivot is it for other economies around the region to succeed? If Thailand succeeds, everyone succeeds, yes? I wouldn't necessarily say so. I think that ASEAN economies have typically been more competitive than they've been complementary. Uh, in the long run, Thailand has issues of economic fundamentals that it will need to address. And I would say central among those issues of economic fundamentals would be the issue of human capital formation. We now see a promise on the part of the new Thai government, a promise that was shared by the Democrat Party to raise the minimum wage. This is long overdue at a time of great inflation in Thailand. By the same token, to raise the minimum wage without achieving comparable gains in productivity is always a very tricky matter. Mm -hmm. But for Thailand's economy to make gains in productivity, Thailand will need to invest much more effectively in human capital that, than has been the case for two or three decades. And I think there, there are real questions about the robustness of the Thai economy in the decade, decade and a half, two decades ahead. 
Well, gentlemen, there, unfortunately, we do have to leave it. I think you've given our viewers across the globe a, a very clear insight into the challenges that Thailand has to uh, look forward to, if we can say that, in the coming months and years. To all of my guests, Kerin Sak, Chirin Wansak, to Michael Montesano and Pitaya Pukaman, gentlemen, thank you for joining me on this edition of Inside Story. And thank you for watching this edition of the programme. We welcome your comments and suggestions. Do please email them to us at InsideStory at aljazeera.net. I'm Sahil Rahman. Until next time, bye-bye.